After close encounters in Vail, Colorado last year, the World Mountain Bike Championships returns to Europe. Kirscharten, just outside Freiburg, on the borders of Switzerland, France, and obviously in Germany. Not too far, 10 kilometers to the town of Freiburg, and we can expect a lot of crowds coming here into the center of the Black Forest. The town already gearing itself up for the invasion by up to 50,000 fans. Time to do a little bit of shopping for some of the competitors. A little bit more leisurely pace for some of the spectators. But away from the razzmatazz of town, what an idyllic setting for the world's most exciting bike races. And it really is a big circus when the mountain bikers come into town. It gives the fans a chance to see exactly what this sport is all about. The innovations that have come into the sport over the last few years. And here, the sponsors have a chance to show their wares. People come from all over the world to these mountain bike events to show exactly what is happening in this sport. And acrobatics is what the riders will have to use to get down this mountain because the town just outside Kershaw, in fact the race is based on Dietenbach. The riders call this Rapen Neck. Start in the bottom left hand of the picture is 4.3 kilometers from the finish and 600 meters downhill. Some of the favorites, Regina Steifel from Germany, 28 years old, and this year the 1995 World Cup champion. Definitely a local favorite, but she will be pushed hard by Missy Giovi, known as Missy the Missile because of her downhill tactics. She really points and presses and goes as fast as she can. 1994 world champion. If you're looking for experience, this lady too has a lot. 29-year-old Italian Giovanni Bonazzi. She was two-time world champion in 91 and 92. But on the start line, this is Brigitte Kasper from Switzerland. And the Swiss have come out here today to look at their favorites. They really feel as if they have a chance. And this is the first chance we have to look at the course. There's the intermediary time. 42-23 and a little bit of a slip in the corner there as she comes out and starts to get the gear going again. But she's setting great times out on the course at the moment. The time to beat is that of a former Swiss champion as well, Rita Bergi, who came down in seven minutes and six seconds. You can see how the course has dried a little bit over the last couple of days too. There was some heavy rainfall in the first part of the week, but you see the crowd pushing this girl all the way down and that's one of the technical parts of the course. You see how they throw their bikes around these corners chance for a little bit of recuperation here you see how the riders are keeping the, the pedaling going once they can every now and again they will try and recuperate out on the starting block again we've got another German rider this is Regina Steifel you hear the crowds for her they all want her to win winner of the World Cup this year doing an absolutely superb ride as she comes through the jump there she's actually just about two seconds off the fastest time set so far by Brigitte Kasper but you can see this lady really does know how to push her bike down these corners. The downhill is such an explosive discipline of the sport, these riders have to warm themselves up an awful lot before they get to the starting blocks because it's seven minutes of sheer effort, pushing themselves all the way. You see, as soon as they get to a straight point, they're pedaling as much as they can, trying to keep the pace up, trying to keep the speed, but out on the course at the moment, the fastest time is being set by Brigitte Kasper of Switzerland. She is chasing her own teammate, Rita Burgi, who has the fastest time at the moment. Time to beat on the line is seven minutes and six seconds. But you know, the German really is flying down this mountain at the moment. This will be, this will be Brigitte Kasper coming down now. Look at the time on the right-hand side, 6.52. Time to beat is seven minutes and six seconds. And this is going to be very close, 6.57. Fastest time of the day so far. Nine seconds faster than her own teammate. What a superb ride. She really has got to be very happy with that. Missy Giovi, the lady everybody loves out here. Missy the Missile, number one, last year's world champion. And a little bit of a difficult start for Missy there, but she will pick it up and she will push herself around every one of these corners. And listen to the crowd. This is Regina Stifel. The Germans all wanted to win. The time to beat is 6.56. She's not going to do that today. Seven minutes and 29 hundredths. That will put her in second position. She won't be too happy with that. But let's not forget, she is the World Cup champion this year. Out on the course, this is Lee Donovan from America. She's doing a superb ride at the moment. You see how she negotiated that corner. She really is a superb downhiller. This year, she won the dual slalom in the United States and the downhill Norba Cup. 
She may well have something up her sleeve today because you know she was entered for the dual slalom and pulled out at the last minute. I think she really would like to put in a good performance here today. She is a great descender. She gives everything she's got. You see that little flick of the back wheel as she comes around the corner there. That was totally controlled. She's pedaling with all of her might here. A little jump just to get over an obstacle in the road there. One or two of the hidden rocks that are out on the course here. She's flying at the moment. Well, great news coming through at the moment because, in fact, Lee Donovan is five seconds faster than Brigitte Casper out on the course at the moment. She's about one kilometer from the finish. She's got to give an awful lot. You can lose so much in the final turns because that is when fatigue starts to come in. But look at her flying around here at the moment. Well, this is the Hutchinson banner. They all know when they see that, that there's not very far to go. Look at the time, 6.28. She's going to go well inside of seven minutes. She's flying down to the finish line. That's the line. 6.56 is the time to beat. She is well inside. That's a new first place. 6.37, 19 seconds faster than the best time so far. That is going to be very difficult to beat. She is extremely happy. Well, there's confirmations of the standings at the moment. Lee Donovan at the top. Brigitte Casper in second place and Katja Repo in third. But this is out on the course. Missy Giovi, the crowd's favorite, is down. She lost a little bit coming around there. She's the kind of rider who takes every kind of risk. And let's take a look at that one more time. She's come around that corner too fast. She's lost a little bit of grip in the front wheel and she has gone down. She's down for about five or six seconds. But you see how Missy is straight up. But I think that's her world championship title gone down the drain today. She was quick, but I don't know that she will be quick enough. She's got back on the bike there, but that will take at least 15 or 20 seconds away from her overall time. She's back and going, but I don't think she'll be too happy with her performance here today. Let's not forget that Missy is coming back from a broken collarbone this year. This lady has broken nearly every bone in her body. She is one of the biggest risk takers. Some of her compatriots even say she's totally mad. Back wheel slipping there as she comes into the corner, but she's lost a little bit of her fluidity, the foot out there, just to control. She's locked up the back wheel, and again she's losing time. You see a crash just puts the nerves up a little bit. Missy not doing too well today. Everything seems to have gone. Coordination, the lot. You have to admire this woman. She really is one of the best in the world. Let's not forget she's just 23 years of age. Last year she was the champion at this event and really has been astounding. She came into the sport. She borrowed a bicycle. This is Missy coming down to the line now. Let's just see how much damage that has done. She's outside the time for the best, but she may well get on to second position at the moment. What a great ride, including a crash 6.54, 17 seconds off. That's good enough for second place for the moment. She's not happy though, Missy. She's thrown herself into the barriers there, but she will not be pleased with that crash. That's just one of those things. A little sign from her hand there explaining to the crowd, I went down, I gave it everything, it was for you guys. Another good lady, Giovanni Bonazzi. She's from Italy. She's 28 years of old. She's extremely experienced. Look at the way she's losing time again. This corner is proving to be a great difficulty for all the riders. If you can throw your bike around there and not lose too much time, then you're doing extremely well. But Bonazzi really having a hard time as well. Let's not forget, this lady has been a two-time world champion as well, 1991 and 1993. She's over the hop there, continuing down. Got a little bit of that fluidity back again. The time to beat at the moment is that of Lee Donovan, 6.37. She may well be coming in with a good ride. That's 6.52, second time at the moment. She's pushed Missy Giovi off the second spot. She won't be too disappointed with that. She's given everything she can. She's in second at the moment. An interesting rider to watch this one too, Mercedes Gonzalez. Listen is coming from Spain, but in fact she lives in the United States. She's a great downhiller, but let's not also forget that she's a nine-time U.S. motorcycling champion in the downhill sport like this. This is Lee Donovan looking at the scoreboard at the moment. She's got a few more minutes to wait to find out whether she's going to be world champion. Well, a few minutes to find out whether or not she's definitely going to be the champion of the world, but she's excited, in fact, to see that her friend Mercedes Gonzalez of Spain has taken over second place in this event. There is a third place rider Bonazzi, they're all extremely happy. Quick look at the leaderboard, then Missy Giovi got knocked off the top spot. Giovanni Bonazzi's in third, Mercedes Gonzalez in second, Lee Donovan in first. When you came through and you had the best time, was it a long time waiting until you realized that you were going to be world champion? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, I felt like maybe I had one since I did have such a big gap, you know. But I, can, I'll, I never count out any racer, just like in 93 when Mike King won in Medivie. You can never count out a racer until the last racer comes down the hill. So you're a happy lady tonight? I'm very happy. I'm going to call my parents right now and wake them up and tell them I'm world champ. Well, that probably would have been 3 o'clock in the morning in California, but I'm sure they were extremely happy. This is the profile that the men will face this afternoon. As you can see, we start at 1,000 meters and finish at 400. This is Thomas Missa out on the course at the moment, a young Spanish rider, extremely good. He rode exceptionally well in the Cap Dye earlier in the year. It takes a lot of risks. This course is suiting him at the moment. He's doing great times out on the course. We have to wait till he comes down. The best time at the moment, in fact, is 6 minutes and 12 seconds of Christian Talafer from France. But it looks to me as if the man from Spain is doing a great job. You see the difference here between the men and the women. The men really have geared themselves up for this part of the course. They've got a slightly bigger gear on to keep the speed up. Average speed at the moment is 44 kilometers an hour for the fastest rider, and I think that may well fall before the end of the day. Superb crowd out here. There's the banner that they all wait for. Look at the time, 6.03. The time to beat is 6.12, and it may well be that he's going to come inside that. He gives every last little bit of energy as he comes down to the line. There it is, 6 minutes and 10 seconds. That's good enough for top place at the moment. Well, he'll be happy with that. The man from Barcelona in Spain speaks superb English. In fact, like a lot of these mountain bikers, spends an awful lot of time in America. Next man in the starting block, Scott Sharples of Australia. Obviously thinking about what's going to happen next year when the World Championships moves to Cairns, into the tropical heat of the Southern Hemisphere. Well, he's off. Good start. Look at that. He really piles on the pressure as he goes out of the starting blocks there. Well, we're on the tricky part of the course here, half distance at the moment. Look at that time on the right-hand side, 3.53. That's the second best time so far. Let's not forget the Spanish rider has gone through with the best time of 3.52, so he's really up in the leaderboard at the moment. As he comes through here, you get a chance to see how much these bikes really do get thrown around. Most of these bikes in a range of about $5,000, and they can only be used for this specific discipline because, as we've said before, they're very special bicycles these riders use these days. Again, he flicks across to the left-hand side of the screen there. That road there is a little bit harder. Picks up as much speed as he can. He's doing a great ride at the moment. Well, that's a very clever move. The first rider I've seen so far jumping onto the tarmac there. Just again to pick up a little bit more speed before we go into this straight part of road section. Disappears into the crowd there. They really have got behind the riders. It doesn't matter where these riders have come from all over the world, but the crowd pushing them onto the occasion and this is exactly what the riders will see this recorded yesterday when the riders were practicing on the course it gives you an idea of exactly how fast and how dangerous this course is obviously when they're racing they're starting in a time trial situation they're starting at one and a half minute intervals but they won't be quite as bunched up as these guys here well down on the finish line everybody waiting for the arrival of Scott Sharples he's got the second best time so far at half distance time to beat will be six minutes and ten seconds that of Tommy Misser, the Spanish rider who everyone here was expecting to finish in the top 10, but really has walked across the top of the leaderboard at the moment. There's the Australian coming now through the Hutchinson barrier. That's what they all look for. They know then they've got to give every last little bit of energy coming down to the line. He's got a good one. Six minutes, 11 seconds. That's good enough for second place at the moment. He'll be happy with that. Excellent ride by Scott Sharples of Australia. That will put him in second place at the moment, but there's some very fast riders to come at the moment. This is number one, the man who was world champion last year, Francois Gachet, 29 years of age, regarded by most as the best downhill man in the world, but he could get pushed very closely to the finish line by his teammate and protege, Nicolas Vouillet. Well, look at that start. He's giving everything. This man will have warmed himself up. He knows exactly what he has to do today. He knows that he's got a teammate chasing him, and he's taking all the risks. Look at the speed. The speed is almost totally different to what we've seen so far today. He threw his bike around that corner, 3.48 was the split time there, almost 40 seconds faster than the fastest lady. Well, here he comes, a foot down there just to control a little bit. He's riding exceptionally well. Best time so far at the midway split. He's going round these corners like a man possessed. 
He throws it around that corner. I thought he was going to lose it for a moment there. What an experience. You see how he's flicked across to the left-hand side of the road. The road is getting a little bit harder there, so you can pick up just that little bit of speed as you come down to the straightest part of the course. The tuck position there, let it get down into a little bit of aerodynamics just to save his breath a little bit, just to save that last little bit of energy because he knows over the last couple of corners he will need that to accelerate, to keep the speed up. 45, 46 kilometers an hour is the speed that this man is doing at the moment. A chance here just to see exactly what these riders have to face. You see how he tries to flick his bicycle over the obstacles. There have been an awful lot of punctures out on the course today. And when the bike is bouncing around like this a lot, what can happen, in fact, is a chain can come off. And these riders have special chain guards. And if your chain comes off, then the day is over for you. But this man is one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. And you see the control. He flicks it around that corner. But it looks to me as if he's got a little bit of difficulty trying to pick up the speed. Also a chance here as he goes through the hop, a very technical part of the course here, to see the total difference between these bicycles and the bicycles that the riders will use tomorrow in the cross country. Nowadays, there is a total different breed of downhill bicycle. They're nearly all hydraulic front and rear. The crowd here waiting for the man that they know is the fastest man in the world. He wears number one. This is what he's got to do. He's coming through here. Six minutes and ten seconds of Thomas Missa, the Spanish rider. Look at this. He's well inside. He's pushing all the way down to the line. He's going to get the best time. Six minutes flat. That is ten seconds faster than the Spaniard. He goes top of the leaderboard. And the crowd know that this man is fantastic. You can hear them rising to him. There are a lot of French people come over here. We're not too far from Strasbourg and the French border. But now he has to wait for about a minute and a half to see if he can be the world champion for the second year running. This may well be the man that can push him off. Look at this rider's pedigree. 19 years of age and already he's been three times world champion. Great start by Vouillet, the man who won Cap Die this year. He really went down that mountain. An incredible descent down in the coast south of France there. Very difficult, very dangerous. Not like today's course, but if you're a good downhill man, you can take to any kind of surface. Look at the way he flicks his bike around that corner. The same way as the man who preceded him. He's using the left shoulder of the road here, picking up as much speed as possible. Into the tuck position, getting that speed up again, 45, 50 kilometers an hour. As he went through the halfway time there, they were almost in the same time. It could well go down to one or two of these French riders, but don't forget, Mike King is out there, the man on the comeback, the American who in 1993 was the world champion. Last year was out with a broken collarbone, but this is Nicolas Vouillet, and look at the difference. He is so much smoother as he goes over that difficult part of the course here. Very rutted, a lot of roots, a lot of stones there, but you have to have total control when you come into this corner. Look at that. You see how he picks his speed up so much quicker than his teammate did. This may well be where he could pick up one or two seconds. And at this level of the sport, that is all you need. The crowd are quiet. They're waiting for this man to come down. See the way that bike is vibrating at the front. You can see the work on those hydraulic forks. They're pushing up and down. They really are giving him a battering. See how the downhillers have a much lower position as well than the cross-country riders. They need that to give them a little bit more stability, especially when they flick around these corners. Look at the crowd today. Unbelievable. Waiting down on the finish line. This is Gachet. He knows now he has to wait to see what the young protege can do. We're coming up to the line. Six minutes flat is the time to beat. We realize that, and it's going to be very close on the line. 57, 5 minutes, 57, 98, 1 is the position that he will go today and look at that one man I think might still be able to beat him that's Mike King but you know I think we've seen the end of Francois Gachet even so he's still going to be in second position at the moment and this is the man 1993 world champion he went out last year he broke his collarbone came back at the end of the year and won one of the downhill races in America but this year he's had a little bit of a hard time although he has been consistent he was second Overall in the World Cup, he's a great rider, great performer. He could well upset the French today. Look at the way he throws his bicycle around these corners. Foot out there to control. A lot of control there being lost. And you see now he is coming down the middle. This is where he'll lose a bit of speed. Both of the Frenchmen went on the hard shoulder towards the left. He's pedaling all the way, keeping his speed up. Well, he 
he's about three or four seconds down on the two Frenchmen at the halfway check, but he's still giving everything. This race can be won and lost in the final few corners. Superb crowd have come out to watch this event today. I don't think the organizers expected this. They were looking for 30,000, and maybe they've got 50. Well, this is Mike King coming down there, still very controlled. He's already got his left hand foot out. You see what he wants to have that foot out for is to control. It'll go down in case of a problem, locks up his back wheel. They know this corner. They've ridden this course four or five times this week. You see there how low he is, and then he just gets out of the saddle to accelerate and bring himself back up to speed. King now got his knees out a little bit. There's his foot just to control. This is the this is the hop, a very difficult part of the course. A lot of riders losing time on this part. And you have to be in total control. You have to get your feet back into the clipless pedals, which these riders have, based on the same thing as the ski bindings. The crowd are waiting now. The two Frenchmen down on the finish line. First and second overall at the moment. They know this man can beat them. That's the time. He's outside the time of the second place Frenchman, but can he get third? He's coming to the line. He's giving everything he's got. 6.05, 6.06, 6.07. Third place for Mike King. Well, he won't be too dissatisfied with that because he has been bitten by the two best downhillers in the world. Well, I don't think he'll be too disappointed with that ride because let's not forget that last year was almost a lost year for Mike King when he was out with that broken collarbone and he's come back from a long way. Well, the best placed German rider at the moment is Jürgen Benecke. In fact, he hails from here in Freiburg, but this man may well be able to push him off the top. This is Christian Lemmetz, and he's coming through with a good time. 6.13 is good enough for seventh, and in fact, he'll push his teammate down one slot into eighth place. Well, you can hear the disappointment of the crowd. They wanted Jürgen Benecke to be the top placed German tonight, but Morten Jentegaard is doing a superb ride out here on the course comes down here to the bunny hop and this is a difficult point to negotiate if you get it wrong you have a 45 to 50 foot drop on the other side and then you miss all of these corners you see he's taken that so badly and as he comes through the cut there you see he's jumping and trying to avoid all the obstacles but he's losing time all the way down to the finish line there he was eventually finished in seventh place but the top three in this year's world mountain bike championships downhill will be third mike king second francois gachet and first Nicolas Vouillet, world champion for the fourth consecutive year. Well, some dramatic racing to bring day one of the World Mountain Bike Championships to a close and two great champions from either side of the Atlantic. Day two takes us just one kilometer away to the other side of the valley for the start of the men's and women's cross-country championships. The course they face will be eight and a half kilometers and it gives them a chance to try all of their skills. There's uphill, there's downhill, and there's a little bit of cornering to go round too. The course starts in the top left-hand side there, down to the bottom at Hexenhauser, and then up back on the right-hand side with a lot of tricky descending, tricky climbing, to find out exactly who will be the world champion at this discipline. 8.5 kilometers, four laps for the women, and six laps for the men later on this afternoon. Well, the referee gives his final instructions. We get a chance to look at some of the favorites on the start line. This is Julia Furtado, 28 years of age, 1993 and 1994 World Cup winner. Final few preparations, a little bit of stretching. The Swiss lady here, this is Sylvia First. She's an excellent rider. 1992 world champion, again, very experienced, 33 years of age. And a lot of spectators travel over the border to see this lady because they feel that she can be world champion again. And the final big favorite who is engulfed by the press here at the moment is Alison Sidor from Canada. She's the outgoing champion, but it really just goes to prove how the sport of mountain biking is taking off because the press have come from all over the world to witness this championships. It's a very nervous moment just before the start there because they all realize that the most important part of this mountain bike race can be in the first 100 meters. It's so important to get a good start. They're off. Well, that's a superb start. You can see, in fact, there on the left-hand side, number one, that is Alison Sider, the outgoing champion. She's got a great start. Followed very rapidly there also by Julie Furtado from the United States of America. Well, just to explain, these riders are seated as they start. The best riders in the world start on the front grid, and afterwards, it's everyone for himself. The little arrow there shows you just exactly where they are at the moment. They have to go down there to the bottom of the course to Hexenhauser, which actually means haunted house. 
can see already the race starting to stre spread out all over the countryside here. The cowbells you can hear in the background, that's the Swiss. They're obviously shouting for Sylvia first. Well, the church tower in Kursarten here and gets a chance for us to look at the beautiful countryside here around the Black Forest. I think having the race here really has raised the profile of the region, letting people know just what a beautiful place it is to come on holiday. But there's definitely no holiday here today for the riders. Very early leader there, in fact, number 57 from New Zealand. That looks very much to me as if that's Kathy Lynch. See one or two riders at the back of the pack suffering already. In fact, you see on the back they have these pouches. They use those to carry not only water, but spare tires because they're not allowed to change wheels in mountain bike racing as they may well do on some of the road racing that you've seen on television. And this is where they are at the moment. They're getting to the rather technical point of the course. About two kilometers from the finish line, it gets us a chance for us to see who is the first leader. And there she is, number one. Alison Sider flying away. Unofficial checks out on the course give her a 30 second lead at the moment. Well, there's only one way to defend the world championships and that is from the front. The lady who won the title back in 1994 has taken the race by the horns at the moment. And she really is able to ride on all kinds of terrain because in 1993, she was the third place rider in the road race championships in the world. She's chased in third position out on the road at the moment by Julie Furtado because one rider has gone through already and in fact that is Chantel Docour from Switzerland. You see the gaps already starting to open with these riders. It's a very fast quarter there and I think we're going to see somebody who is able to last a long tough day coming out on top. This is Alison Sido. You can hear the crowd getting behind them. You know, she really is a superb athlete. She's trained an awful lot on the road. She likes to ride road racing as well as mountain bike racing. But this is a terrain where she really does excel. The chance to see here some of the back markers. It really is opening up at the moment. It's a very fast course. It's dried over a bit. And you see, if you come into one of those corners and you lose it, you lose an awful lot of time. Another Canadian going through there as well. Well, coming up to the end of the first lap, it won't be very long before we get a chance to get a definite time check on the finish line here. Alison Sido opening up the gap officially. We think that she may well be 35 seconds up on the chasing rider, Chantel Docourt. And Docourt has an awful lot of supporters out here. In fact, many of the riders painted themselves up in blue faces to look like strubs. and looking extremely comfortable at the moment but you know it's an awful long way to go there's the time check 19 seconds so it isn't very much 77 going through that is Docourt and third out on the road number 92 Julie Furtado it looks to me as if she's suffering a little bit because she couldn't stay in contact with the leaders getting out of the saddle she's trying to stretch her back a little bit I think there she is pushing herself she is let's not forget one of the older riders in the race today but she would like to go out with another world title under her belt. She gets a chance to look over her shoulder there. I think she wants somebody to come up from behind to help her a little bit. Look at the time splits already. After one lap, she's 58 seconds down. Well, she is chased just a few seconds later, also by the Italian favorite Paolo Pezzo and the German Regina Marunde. Well, at the end of lap two, confirmation of the position out on the course. Alison Sidor of Canada still in first place, ahead of Chantal Docor of Switzerland, and Sylvie first of Switzerland in third place. Juliana Fatado has dropped back just a little bit into fourth. Chance to look across the forest here really is a superb terrain for a mountain bike race, and this is the leader, Alison Sidor, building on that lead all the time. The chasing lady here, in fact, is Docor from Switzerland. Let's not forget. This lady is a two-time European champion. She's doing a great job. She realizes now is the time that she has to put the pressure on if she's going to close the gap. But she has a teammate chasing behind as well. Sylvia First, also from Switzerland, would like to get back into the contention. You see how the early riders are digging the mud up now. It really is starting to get treacherous on this descent. It's very, very slippy, and our motorbike cameraman is doing a fine job to stay in contact with these bike riders. There she gets onto the hardened part of the course there. All the time she's looking for the best part of the route so she can pick up a little bit of speed. But this course today, the soggy part on the back part of the circuit, is very, very strength sapping. 
chance to try and check out the gears here. She's at the bottom of the course here. There we're at Hexen House, the, the haunted house area. It really has built a lot of tradition here in the area. Many people come to visit it because they believe that the old lady still lives there. come into the third lap here Alison Sider really is walking away with this race I don't think anybody can challenge the lady from Canada she's built her season around this event I feel she wasn't so good in the World Cups this year but when it came down to the World Championships you've got to be on form Chantal Docour still holding on to second place but you see she's not quite as fluid as she goes around those corners a little bit of difficulty there picking up the speed as she looks for the hard part of the dirt to pick up a little bit of speed but it is difficult She's doing a great job, but she really doesn't have the class of the super champion of today, I think. You know, Alison Sider is walking away with this event. A little bit further down in third position on the road, Sylvia First. She's been joined by Julie Furtado, and Furtado trying to stay in contact. The Americans felt that she could come today and walk away with another title. Let's not forget, this lady has been the world champion in not only the cross country, but also the downhill. Everybody looking for a good vantage point to get a good shot because this really is a photogenic sport. The battle here, look at the way those bikes are vibrating the arms. It really does tire you out because these ladies are going to race for something like two hours today and it is a tough event. Look at this, number 100 coming through at the moment. 29 is the French girl that I've been looking for, that's Sophie Hozot. Her husband is a former professional rider who rode the Tour de France and she's obviously been taking a lot of tips from him because she's staying right in the slipstream. Well, there's the lap, bell lap for Alison Seidel. One lap to go, eight and a half kilometers to find out whether she can be crowned world champion for the second year in succession. As she goes through the feeding station here, she gets a chance to take a bottle for the last time if she's gonna need it. But look at the concentration on this lady's face. There she takes the bottle. She will want to keep herself topped up because she wouldn't want to crack in the last few kilometers of the race. Well, the long, lonely ride of a champion, but in eight and a half kilometers, anything can happen. Chantal Docor comes through, one minute and 10 seconds behind the leader. Superb ride, but she's being chased quite rapidly now by Sylvia First, who's not too far behind her, but look at this, the pain can be seen all over her face. She realizes she has eight and a half kilometers to put things to right. She takes her last bottle, that'll be filled up with some kind of isotonic drink to keep her going for the last 20 minutes of effort. Well, moving up into third place is Sylvia First, and information coming to us, in fact, that Julie Furtado has crashed. Annabelle Stoparo from Italy has moved up into fifth place, but still at the top of the leaderboard is Alison Seidel. A lot of riders having great difficulties out on the course at the moment. This is 167, Sabina Spitz from Germany, who really is going through all kinds of purgatory. Number 44 from Japan, Kanako. They've brought an excellent team over here. The important thing about today, though, is to finish in the top 15 teams for these ladies because that way they'll qualify for the Olympics next year. One of the Chinese riders at the back also suffering. It is a long day in the saddle for some of these backmarkers. This is Jay McDonald from the Australian Institute for Sport. They really have increased their participation around the world. The Aussies, they're doing a great job. This is Chantal Docour. You can hear the Swiss shouting encouragement. They want to get her up there, but she is at the moment over one minute behind the lone leader, Alison Seidor. This is number seven, Katrina Miller from Australia, another Aussie who's giving everything, but she is about to be lapped because here, number one, out on the course at the moment is the lady that's walking away with the championship, Alison Seidor, but she mustn't take too many risks because you know, if you go down at this time of the game, you don't get a spare bicycle, you don't get a spare wheel, you're out of the running. There's second place rider, Dokor at the moment. She goes through the mud, she's throwing the bike all over the place, but she is rapidly being chased by this lady, Sylvia First. Here the Swiss there, hop, hop, hop is what they're shouting. This is the part of the course they're on at the moment. They're moving into the tricky part. A couple more climbs to go and then about one kilometer to the finish. And look what's happened. In fact, number 78, Sylvia First has moved into second place and now she is chasing the lone leader. Look at that. Third place out on the road here is 77, Docor. She's slipping back. She'll have to keep it going. She's struggling an awful lot at the moment. You see the pain in her arms. In fact, this is when you make mistakes. You come into a corner like that, you lose control, and that's when you lose seconds. But this lady is not making any mistakes today. 
Alison Sidor at the front has done everything right. She's come to this World Championships with the best possible form and she wants to go away for the second year running as a champion of the world. It won't be very long now when she comes into the stadium to a great crowd because she's a popular rider, very quiet but very dedicated. Well, that's it, you know, for Alison Saido. She gets a chance for a lap of honor as she comes down here. The two arms aloft. She now knows that she's champion of the world for the second year in success. And what a superb ride by this young lady from Canada. She is elated as she comes up. Three or four hundred meters to go. She's going to take this pleasure home with her to Canada next week. Look at that. Almost two hours in the saddle. She comes up to the finish line. That's been an extremely tough day for this young lady. One hour, 59 and 31 seconds. Seconds, but that was the best ride of the day. A quick stop there by the referees to check and make sure she's had no illicit bike changes out on the course. And second place will go to this lady, Sylvia First from Switzerland. She's done a great pursuit to get back into contention. She had a bit of bad luck in the early part of the course, but she won't be too dissatisfied with second place. She looks over her shoulder to see if she can see her teammate. There's nobody else there, but she waves to the crowd. The Swiss are going wild. You can see the Swiss flags in the bottom of the picture there. They are happy. They throw roses to the lady that they love. One minute and four seconds further back she was from the winner, Alison Sido, but out on the course, you know, this young lady, Annabella Straparo, is doing a great ride. She's a young rider, we didn't expect to see her. She's given everything she's got. She's extremely tired, but she's going to be happy when she gets to the finish line because she really will be carrying the hopes of Italy. Well, that was a great ride by Chantal Docour. She was out chasing the leader for a long time there. She gave everything. One minute and 49 seconds back on the leader, but she will be happy with third place tonight. She's happy. Alison, I spoke to you a couple of days ago, and you didn't really want to say that you thought you could win this because you didn't want to jinx yourself, but you must have been quietly confident. Well, I know, you know, the only thing you can do is take care of your preparation, and I know I've had a good two weeks of preparation, and I knew that, uh, you know, the course, I like the course a lot. I, I thought it suited my abilities really well. But, uh, yeah, you know, I think you, you know, most riders don't really want to put themselves in the position of being the favorite and uh, like to just, just keep quiet about uh, what they think their form is. Well, that was a superb ride. Here is confirmation of the final result there. Alison Sidor takes that championship for the second year. Sylvia first from Switzerland was second. Chantal Docor of Switzerland was third. Annabella Straparo did come in fourth place with Sophie Hosoff, France, in fifth. Well, that was a superb morning's racing for the ladies, but now the creme de la creme as we wait on the start line with Luca Bramati of Italy. This is when we will see all the top riders. This is Ralph Berner of Germany, the local boy they all want to win. The first winner of the World Championships, in fact, Ned Overend of the United States. A little bit of a yawn from Hans Erik Ostergaard there, the Danish rider who could be up at the top of the podium tonight. Well, there's the course, exactly the same course that the ladies face this morning, eight and a half kilometers around, and they will have to cover that on six separate occasions. And it's going to be a very tough day for these men. Well, the last tense moments before the start here, they'll pull that banner out of the way, and it's off for these riders. There's the flag, and the riders leaping away. They have to get a good start on the left-hand side. You can see the American there, Tinker Juarez. He's going away as rapidly as he can. They realize the first 100 meters sometimes is the most critical because there are 157 riders in this race. And if you're caught at the back of the pack, it's going to take you an awful long time to get back up to the leaders. Well, here in the lead at the moment is number 73 from Luxembourg, Jempi Druka, setting the early pace. But it may well be that he's going to be the hare for the hounds because there are some big names back in the pack who want to get to the front. Well, as they head into the trees for the first time, these riders jockeying for position. It's still Jempi Druka from Luxembourg in the front, but already in second position there is Tinka Juarez. A little bit further down in the green jersey, nice to see Martin Ehrle of Ireland. Not really renowned as a mountain bike rider, rode the Tour de France, in fact, won a stage there, but he's converted to mountain biking with quite a lot of success. And you see here, everybody's fighting to get in there. They realize they've got to get into the first obstacles in a good position because otherwise you get blocked in the traffic jam at the back. 
these riders really are fighting to move up and this is the disadvantage of starting off in mountain bike racing because you have to qualify you have to get world points to move yourself up in the seedings this is the course the riders face today gives you an idea of the profile they're heading into the first climb at the moment after one and a half kilometers but you can see the jagged points of the course it's up and down all the way and that will bait the backs of some of the strong men an early leader here number 54 Luca Bramati the man we saw on the start line earlier on he's opening up a fantastic gap and the crowd is all over this course they've come from all around the world to see these riders in second place at the moment number 88 that's Rune Hoydal followed by Bart Brenchens the winner of the recent Tour de France mountain bike race and Darius Gill from Poland but this is the man at the front Luca Bramati from Italy he is flying around those corners at the moment Superb piece of bike landing there, but you can see the strength of this man as he goes around the corner there and accelerates away, and we get a chance to look back down the course and see the gap. Round about 30 seconds his lead at the moment, and that is a very quick start. Well, Brenchens, the Dutch rider, goes through there in third, but Tinker Juarez looks to me as if he's having a little bit of difficulty, not as fluid as he is normally. Recently, he won a race by seven and a half minutes in the United States, but it may well be that he peaked too early. Bramati at the front here, negotiates that corner superbly. It won't be very long before he's on the track there at the end of lap one, but look at the crowd. I don't think anybody could have expected such an astounding success as we've had here in the Black Forest. A little bit further down the field, 83, there is Marcel Arns, but the man they all want to win here, Ned Overend, the winner of the first ever mountain bike world championships. He seems to be suffering quite a bit. Well, look at that time as we come to the end of the first lap. Luca Bramati is doing an astounding ride, almost four minutes faster than the ladies' time. He goes through in 22 minutes and 49 seconds. Well, we have a very good chase group here forming behind. Not more than 30 seconds, I wouldn't think, when they come to the line. This is Darius Gill from Poland at the front. He's followed by Tinker Juarez. Hoydal is in there for Norway and also Brenchens from Holland. 30 seconds on the line it is, and these riders will have to pull out all the stops if they want to get back up to the front. Well, although Luca Bramati is at the top, there's actually no difference between the riders in second, third, and fourth position. They've got a good chasing group after this man, and there's the wave. They want to get a little bit of atmosphere out here on the course. They know that this man, Bramati, is doing a great ride at the front. He's flying through them on 30 seconds is his lead. He's off. This is a little bit of cyclocross. We don't see this too often in mountain bike racing, but he decided that it was a lot quicker to put his bike on his shoulder and run up the mountain here. But look at this. This is Brenchens coming across on his own. He's left that group. This man too knows a little bit about cyclocross. He's getting off and decided this is the best way, the fastest way to get round here. This man is doing a good job. And look at the gap these two riders have at the moment. Gill, the Polish rider in third place, is chasing, and Tinker Juarez, to me, looks to be in all kinds of difficulties. Gill got a little gear. He's decided to ride up this climb at the moment. That may well pay at the end of the day because the two riders at the front have got an awful lot of confidence. Look at that Tinker Juarez. He really is suffering. Hoyadal here coming through as well. He's decided to take it as a walk. Jumps back onto his bicycle, tries to lift it, but behind the race, in fact, has changed dramatically because coming through in first position is 84. Bart Brenchens, the winner of that recent Tour de France mountain bike race, and he is putting the pressure on. Bramati doing well to stay in contact there. Well, these two riders have got a great lead at the front. Information coming to me over there. Intercom system is, in fact, that it's 32 seconds the gap that they have over the chasing rides, and this could be a decisive moment. All the time, though, you see Tinker Juarez, the man that many expected would shine today, is suffering. He's staying in the wheel of the Polish rider, Darius Gill. He's letting Gill do all the work. And what's gone wrong here? What has happened to his bike? He doesn't look very happy there. Look at the back wheel. In fact, you can see he's broken his gears, and that's the unfortunate thing about mountain bike racing. If you have a mechanical failure, you can't change your bike, you can't change your gears, and the day is over. His hopes of being world champion have gone out of the window. The man from Italy, all that rests for him to do now is to walk back to the pits. His day is over. What a sad ending for that man, but it leaves this man with a little bit of luck. Bart Brenchens now is in the lead, all on his own. Number 84 from Holland, the man that many people thought could only ride the stage races, could only ride things like the Tour de France, and he really has come up with the goods today. He's opening up a fantastic lead, 45 seconds over the chasers, and Tinker Juarez behind is trying to put the pressure on, but I think he's left it a little bit too late.
the crowd really appreciating this. They're getting behind all the riders. They can realize now that the man at the front is doing a superb ride. It looks now as if Juarez has got back a little bit of his fluidity. He's getting around those corners a lot better than he did on the first few laps. But this is the man doing the damage at the front. He's the brother-in-law of the famous Tour de France rider, Gert Jan Tunis. In fact, they train together, and I'm sure that that is why he's got this speed on the road. He looks to me to be traveling four or five kilometers an hour faster than anybody else when he gets onto the flat, fast sections of this course. Well, Bart takes time to look over his shoulder there, but you don't need to look because they're a long way behind you at the moment, Bart. You're doing a great job. He comes over there in 47 minutes and 20 seconds. He really is opening up the gap while further back down the course, riders in all kinds of difficulty, really suffering on this part of the course. It's a very steep uphill here. Towards that rider, pushes his foot down to get himself going again. Riders all over this course. Many riders up to 30 minutes back so far. And we can see this Belgian rider here also having some difficulty. In fact, he has broken his bicycle too. That all remains for him to do is walk back to the pit because his day is over as well. That's what you have to be careful of because you can come unstuck so easily. This is Masanori Kosaka of Japan. He's come across here to try and race with the best of them in the world, and he's doing a great job. Get a chance here to follow the man at the front and he is riding a superb race you see how he's out of the saddle he's looking for the hardest part of the course just so that his bike doesn't sink down into the mud you also get a chance to see how much different these bikes are to the bikes we saw yesterday's race when they were using those very specialized downhill braces he's out of the saddle really like a road cyclist he really is using all of his body all of his force to push it up and what's going on down here on the course Number 37 comes through now. This is Miguel Martinez, the man who last year was the world junior champion in Vail. And he's doing a great ride. He's in second place on the road at the moment. He's blown everybody away. Well, as the 19-year-old Frenchman rides himself into second place, there's a great group forming here for third place. And in fact, it looks very much to me as if Jan-Eric Ostergaard has joined them. Well, you get a chance here to see what a superb crowd has turned out at the end of lap four. This is confirmation of the position. Bart Brenchens is leading ahead of Miguel Martinez of France. Jan-Eric Ostergaard has moved up into third place. A long way down the field today, number 325, the man who was the hero of the Americas, John Tomac. Tomac was world champion back in 1991 in the cross country, and he finished second in the downhill in the same year when he thought he was going to get the double. Chance here to see another of the Japanese riders. This is Mototuro Yoshida who's come up into the frame. These Japanese really have done a great ride. They've come over here. They've got an American coach who's bringing them up. And we get a chance now to see the speed of the man at the front of the race, Bart Brenchens. This is one of the fastest parts of the courses. It's a very hard, packed dirt road. And he picks up as much speed as he can before he flicks off back into the forest again. He's doing a great ride today. He's opening up the gap all the time. At the end of lap four, he was two minutes in the lead ahead of this young man, Miguel Martinez, whose father was a former Tour de France rider. He won the King of the Mountains in 1978. And it looks to me as if Miguel, at 19 years of age, has got a great career ahead of him. Third place on the road now has been taken over by Jan-Eric Ostergaard. He's dropped his companions, and I think, you know, Tinka Juarez is not having the greatest of days. He's six kilometers from the finish line at the moment. The man at the front here sampling the crowd. Look at this. This is like we would not see on the Tour de France. We wouldn't see in the Tour of Spain. This, in fact, is the World Mountain Bike Championships, and the crowd have come out in force. Over 50,000 people are watching this man. You can see now at the end of the race, he's starting to suffer. He's getting every last little bit out of his body. He's hunched over those handlebars. He knows he's got to get to the top of this climb, and he can recuperate a little bit more. But the information will be coming back to him that the time is going up all the day. Look at that crowd. It's absolutely unbelievable. They've turned out. They've come from all over Europe to see this. This is Miguel Martinez, the young man. Finished third, in fact, in the Cyclocross Championships of the World earlier this year in Switzerland, just over the border. And the man here, Jan-Erik Ostergaard, has really improved this year. He's ridden a lot of road racing as well. In fact, he rode the Tour of Denmark. But as we come up to the finish line, this man knows that he has got the World Championships in his bag. They said he was only good to ride the Tour de France mountain bike race. But today, he has ridden himself into a world jersey. He'll be wearing the rainbow jersey for one year from today. Bart Brenchens, champion of the world.
comes in there for the last minute check. The commissaire will be in there to make sure there's no illegalities, no wheel changes. But Bart Brenchen, the Dutchman, who has done a superb ride today, he has walked away with victory. Well, coming up to the line, this man is extremely elated. He looks as if he's won the race. They said he was burned out at the age of 19, but I don't think second place in a world championships is burnt out to me. What a superb ride by this man. He's extremely happy, but you can't take joy away from the winner. But after the Tour de France this year, this must be a great day for you. Yeah, it is. I won a lot of races last, uh, last part of the season. And uh, I was in a very good shape in the Tour de France. And uh, I feel better and better. I was twice second in the World Cups in uh, Plymouth and Italy. And today was, <laughs> was unbelievable. Well, a lot of people thought you'd be tired after the Tour de France, but you really led the race from the start. Uh, yes, but uh, I feel every day better in the Tour. And that's uh, why my form goes better every day. And, uh, yeah, I feel good. I like it to to do every day uh, a hard race, and uh, we had a good uh, yeah, soigneur and everything from the American Eagle team. So uh, I feel better and better, and I like it. Mountain biking is very great when you have a good shape, and it's great fun. And today was unbelievable. The people were very great. It, you you couldn't feel any uh, hurt, so it was very great. <laughs> But about you may not have felt any hurt, but I think one or two riders further down did. Marcel Arns from Holland did a great ride to finish sixth. Rune Hoyldahl, a good comeback to move up into fifth place. Tinker Juarez, everyone's favorite, took fourth from America. Jan Eric Ostergaard in third slot. Miguel Martinez of France took second, but the man at the top of the leaderboard from Holland, Bart Brenchens, champion of the world. Really a great chance, but let's not forget the ladies. Two Swiss ladies finished in third and second. That was Chantal Docor, Sylvia First, and Alison Seidor at the top. Second year in succession, she was the world champion. Well, from the Black Forest of Germany, next year we'll go to the tropical heat of Cairns in Australia. Come back and join us then. <laughs>